Alright, so our water just broke. <laughs> Meet Elias, youngest member of our family. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Linda from the Budats family and uh, I'm a wife to Pauls and mama to our firstborn baby Elias. And today I wanted to share with you my wonderful natural unmedicated birth experience that I had two months ago almost. So Elias is almost two months and um, it's been great. We've been very busy with him and uh, so this is finally the day I am doing and recording the birth vlog. So hopefully you enjoy it and let's get to it. So it was July 2nd early in the morning. Well not so early, it was about 9, 9 a.m. but it was the first decent sleep that we had in a while especially for me because it was pretty challenging and hard to, to really feel comfortable at night with the with the growing and, and the big belly and it was my 39th week and I think if not mistaken third day so I wasn't 40 weeks yet uh, I woke up at around 9 a.m. and uh, I felt like a weird pop like a joint pop but it was it felt like a softer than joint pop and it, it was it wasn't like only a feeling it was also I could hear it it was very weird at first I thought oh that's probably more like uterus or hip joints adjusting and preparing for the birth but since I'm a first time mom and I'm giving the birth for the first time I had no idea how does it feel when you lose your mucus plug. That was exactly that and I had no clue. So I got up to go to the bathroom and I took like three steps and whoo, uh, my water's broke and the amniotic fluid was just leaking on the carpet and I was, I was like, I had just woken up and I was like really shocked and surprised and confused. And I told him, like, uh, Paul's, I think my water's broke. And he was like half asleep and he just instantly got up and threw the blanket away. He was like, okay, let's go. Like in the movies, when they show you like the water's break and you just have to go to the hospital right away. <laughs> and you, and, and the baby pops out shortly. <laughs> but that wasn't the case for us because my contractions didn't start right away. We were instructed to page our midwives when the waters break and in other cases so while I was standing in the shower because my water just kept leaking uh, with every single move in the meantime Paul was paging the midwives and uh, we had to describe the amniotic fluid if, if, if it, it had to be clear it had to be odorless and maybe a little bit of bloody show and that was exactly like that and um, yeah we just had to wait for the contractions to start since they didn't start immediately after the waters broke we just continued with our day <laughs> that's what we had to do and we scheduled um, an appointment at 3 30 p.m. with at, at the clinic with the midwives to check what's going on with me and my baby in case that contractions wouldn't start but luckily they did in a few hours um, so yeah I took a shower, I washed my hair, I did my hair, pretty much went on with the day and it felt really weird because we did basically the same things except working of course um, but I was technically in labor and that felt really bizarre and while while I was in shower Paul made me um, a very delicious champion's breakfast <laughs> as I like to call them. It was oatmeal with a bunch of good stuff like coconut um, hemp seeds and I think it was peanut butter as well in there but yeah it was really really filling because we knew it was gonna be a long day and night ahead so we had to have our breakfast and we had to have our nutrition and um, 
energy. Yeah, we just went on with our day and um, we were snacking all the time. We had a lot of protein bars. We I, I drank a lot of water, a lot of coconut water. And um, yeah, we pretty much ate and went through all the snacks that we had bought and like put in the hospital bag. We decided to go to Trader Joe's just, you know, to keep moving and to be out and about and just maybe make the time go by a little bit faster. So we went to Trader Joe's. They had this like really, really delicious sparkling watermelon juice. So we got that. We went for a walk in the park and um, at that point the contractions were like seven eight minutes apart but the appointment that we had set to check the baby and me was like a, an hour away so we canceled that since the contractions had started and uh yeah we just went on with our day and at around 6 p.m the contractions started to get more intense and i felt like I need paul's attention because until that he was playing vr we were just hanging out and just doing pretty much nothing and uh, at that point already I was practicing the deep breathing I I basically breathed through the early contractions as well because I wanted to get in that rhythm of breathing through contractions so that's what I did I was preoccupied with the contractions at that point already we wanted to watch a movie and like get me distracted from the contractions but the contractions at that point were a little bit too strong for me to focus on the movie and understand what's going on so the movie it wasn't a success <laughs> and yeah i think around 6 p.m i really started to have those strong contractions that i needed to really focus on and ground myself and be really present and then around 9 p.m. we checked in with our midwife and uh, she listened through the phone how I am handling the contractions and then she offered whether we go to the clinic to check the dilation and to decide whether we have to go to the birth center or she could come to our house so we of course we <laughs> we picked the second option and she came to us around 9 30 I guess she was here and uh, she checked me and I was only like three centimeters dilated. I didn't feel disappointed about that because um, I was doing really good and I felt like I could do some few hours more. To speed up the dilation process, my midwife suggested doing a complex of three positions. I recorded a YouTube short for that. Check it here. It's a complex of three positions that you have to hold in a certain sequence for 15 to 20 minutes each and holding it through your contractions. It worked wonders. It basically went from three centimeters to fully dilated in three and a half hours. So definitely check that out and I think it should help you as well if you need to speed the dilation. And even if you don't need to speed the dilation, if you just really want to smooth dilation process in general. Our midwife warned us, if I can say so, that I am definitely going to feel when when the next stage of contractions hit, that there's going to be no question and that was that was very true. I had no questions that the next stage of contractions, like the next level, really hit me while I was doing the second position, which is the lying down position. Um, that was intense and it really started to test like the limits but luckily the dilation and the, the, the pain of the dilation and the labor pain um, it doesn't get worse after seven centimeters so there was this one point when the contractions didn't get really stronger and that was like a nice steady point like to hold on to and the fact that I could breathe through them was like an affirmation that I can do it and I can go through the whole process 
Um, so yeah, and then the midwife that was on the call changed at around 10 p.m. So we called our second midwife to let her know that we are ready to go to the birth center because we went through the whole um, complex of positions and it really felt like this is the point where we go. Then at 11, 11, okay, 11, 11. Why I'm stressing on the 11, 11? Because it has a special part in our lives. So special that I even have a tattoo. Every time it's 11, 11, almost every time, but the thought behind of this is that put your hands together or don't put your hands together, but feeling grateful for where you are, who you are, with who you are, what you're doing, everything. Just take a moment for that one minute and just stop, breathe and observe and just be grateful for everything. So at 11.11, we left the house to go to the birth center. And at that point, the contractions were so strong and so close together. I would say maybe 30 seconds apart. It was intense. Funny moment here is that um, I was leaning on Paul like this and he was holding me. He pushed the button with his knee and he accidentally pushed like the parking lot button that that is below the first floor where we had to go. So we spent a, a little more time in the elevator and that was funny. We went down and there were two dudes standing um, and I remember like very foggy. There are some parts that I don't remember really as I was just so intense and so deeply um, focused inward that I really lost the, the, the sense of space and time and and basically everything. I was just like this. And I remember though that there were two dudes standing <laughs> the elevator down at the parking lot and I was leaning on Paul's and I was like, sorry, we're in labor. I think that the most intense part was where we were on the way to the birth center. Because at that point you can't really be in your best position. You have to be sitting down. And I think that was the moment that I kind of had a clue how painful the birth experience can be if you're if you're laboring on your back. Like the most hospitals like to um, do that and just like have you lying down on your back and just pushing. It's insane. You need to have the opportunity to get in the most comfortable position for you. Because your, your body knows, your body is extremely smart and it knows in what position it has to be during contractions, during birth. You just have to tune in and listen to it. Interestingly, from all the birth positions that I was studying while pregnant, there are only two positions that are used that I, that, that, that I really needed. And I didn't at any point consider changing the position because it, it felt right. I was either standing or on my knees, but I was putting my weight on my um, elbows and I was leaning onto the countertop or on the couch while on the on the knees. That was that was it. That's that's the only thing I used while in labor. And uh, another position um, on my knees, sitting on my knees while I was in the bathtub. But I will get to that a little bit. Later. So we got to the birth center. Our midwife was there already, the room was set, and I basically went into the room and got down on my knees again and was, and I was leaning on the bed and just breathing through contractions and continuing to drink water, and um, that was, that was all. And then at one point, my midwife suggested to go to empty my bladder, because full bladder can actually slow down the dilation, and after that, um, she checked checked how far dilated am I and I was basically fully dilated like nine centimeters eight me she said eight to nine centimeters so I was ready to start pushing basically I'm so grateful for Paul's that he suggested to fill the bathtub because I completely forgot about the bathtub even though that was one of the main reasons why we chose to give birth at that birth center 
basically when I was um, fully dilated, he's just, maybe we should fill the bathtub. Do you want to try the bathtub? I was like, yeah, please. And then once I got into the bathtub, I just stayed there. And like moments after, I started to push. And it was, it was an insane feeling, that urge to push. Um, it's like... I, w I was reading about the urge to push in, in the books while I was preparing for the birth and I was like, that's interesting, like, that's something you can't control. I wonder how that feels. And it feels just like the book said, that you really can't control that. You just, you just can't control it. You just, your body just pushes and the only thing you can do is support it with your breath or slow it down with your breath, that's it. You can't stop it. You're gonna give the birth either way. You're ready or not, but here the baby comes. Pulse was my only real like birth partner support. He was my doula. He was he was my everything <laughs> during birth. I was leaning on him. He was supporting me at one point, guiding me like through the breaths and doing like back scratches and yeah. Um, I got into bathtub, I started to push, and then the pushing phase was only like 40 minutes. At one point, Elias was um, emerging like too fast, and then my midwife suggested that I change the way I breathe, because I was continuing the deep breathing, and she suggested that I do like short, quick breaths to slow the baby coming out just a little bit so to avoid tearing so I had instead of doing the deep breaths I had to do like this <laughs> and then push um, so yeah that was interesting and I felt like it really helped because it was intense to say the least and yeah I was again I was so focused inward I was so focused on the on the breathing, on every single like this, this bearing down feeling, kind of lost track of time, track of like sense of surrounding, sense of like space, everything. And I was really like surprised when Elias actually came out, and like a few moments after he was on my chest, and it was like it was done, like it was over. The, the birth. The birthing was accomplished and it took me a moment to realize that to pull myself out of that state of like deep deep focus into the process but So in total, um, my labor and birth went for 16 and a half hours only. The active labor was only 3.5 hours. Pushing phase was 40 minutes and the rest of that was the easy part at home. 
So I'm super grateful for such a wonderful birthing experience, such a fast birth. And all the timing, all the circumstances, just... I feel like I got lucky. It would definitely be harder if the, if the labor started like late at night or... Yeah. Although, you never know. Every birth is different, every birth is holy and precious and worth telling. that's it for the vlog i hope you got some good takeaways and inspiration for your natural birth but i do have some juicy tips for you in another video i'll link it here and in the description box below so go ahead and watch that for the full experience see you next time